assalamu alaikum students welcome to your another google class now today we are going to start a new lesson yes its name is energy resources now you all are familiar with energy resources i hope all of you are familiar with it if you remember that earlier this year in your school in sapient hall school we have celebrated the earth day and you guys have made posters of you know the earth and all the climatic changes and all the resources the energy resources that we should use wisely so what are the objectives of this lesson the objective of this lesson is to make you all realize that how many types of energy resources are there and why we should use them wisely so when we are talking about the energy resources being used wisely we are particularly talking about the renewable or the non renewable yes the non renewable energy resources so we should use the non renewable energy resources wisely why is that so we are going to continue and discuss it in other slides now before going into details we should be able to define what is energy so what is energy you people tell me how you do your work and you also tell me can you perform your duties well if you don't have enough energy in your body think about it obviously not you cannot perform your duties well if you don't have enough energy in your body so now you know that energy is the ability to do work so what is food for your body yes it is kind of fuel to your body that will help you to do work now and there are different types of energy resources that is renewable energy resources and non renewable energy resources i want all my students to search for the renewable energy resources and write it down on your rough copies now there is an interesting game for you people that in the first slide i have left some hints so go back to the first slide and try to find as much energy re renewable energy resources as you can and write it down on your copy and we are going to discuss this in the zoom class as far as the re non renewable energy resources is concerned we are going to study them in detail in our next slides another important definition is about combustion so combustion is basically anything that is burning is a combustion reaction that generate a large amount of heat as well so what is combustion burning of anything that is generating a large amount of energy so this is basically combustion now there are three types of combustion reaction number one is the rapid combustion the rapid combustion reaction is a reaction in which a large amount of heat and light are produced in a short time an example is burning of methane gas on your stove second type of combustion is the spontaneous combustion now these are the combustion reactions that occur on their own so obviously it takes at a slow pace examples are the forest fires third type of reaction is explosive as the name suggests it will be very fast and a large amount of heat light and sounds are produced rapid expansion of the gases will produce a large sound fireworks are exploded in the festivals all of you must be aware of the beirut attacks or the beirut bomb explosions that happened on 4th august so basically what happened that there was a company that was having some ammonium nitrate which are kind of a combust combustible material so they were having that ammonium nitrate with them and somehow a fire started over there and it caused a havoc that human history has never seen in their lives so i want you to study that that as well basically those explosions were kind of the explosive combustion reactions go into the details try to find out uh, the reasons why uh, beirut attacks were there now i want all of you to go through this video and discuss it with me in the zoom class as i will ask a lot of questions over there combustion humans do a lot of burning in the past we burned a lot of wood and we still burn some we burn huge amounts of the fossil fuels coal oil 
and natural gas. Sometimes we burn hydrogen. Although we burn different things, in every case, the substance that we burn, the fuel, combines with oxygen in a chemical reaction that releases energy, usually heat and light, and often sound. Reactions of this type are called combustion reactions. Energy isn't the only product of combustion reactions, but usually the other products are treated as waste. For example, when we burn coal, it produces carbon dioxide as well as energy. And when we burn hydrogen, we get water as well as energy. In both of these cases, the chemical products are gases that we leave to drift off into the atmosphere. Some combustion reactions are very fast. If you mix hydrogen and oxygen gases before setting them alight, the reaction occurs in a split second. We call it an explosion rather than burning. And it's the same inside a car engine. The fuel is mixed with air in the cylinder and explodes with a spark from the spark plug. But put the same fuel in, say, a camping stove, and it burns. It's the same combustion reaction, just happening at a different rate. Combustion reactions are incredibly important for the way we live. We use them to keep warm, to heat water, to cook, to move cars, ships and planes, for manufacturing and to produce electricity. But they're not always helpful, and they can get out of control. What are common fuels? Now, all the common fuels that are being mentioned on this slide are basically the non-renewable energy resources, which means that once they are depleted or once they are gone, you cannot replenish them easily. It's not like magic. Once they are gone, they are just gone because it takes millions of years for these energy resources to form. We will discuss how these energy resources are formed in our later slides, but to let you know that these are basically the non-renewable energy resources. Why? Because we cannot replenish them easily. Now I've explained the concept of fuel in slide number two. So here I will elaborate this a little bit. Now these fuels are the sources of energy as you can see in the picture. Now what do you see in the picture on the top? What do you think it is? Actually, these are large deposits of natural gas in a factory. Another important resource, energy resource, is coal. You must be familiar with it. Recently on Eid al-Adha, you guys must have barbecued some really delicious meat. And all of you has almost used what? Coal. Another important energy resource is coke. Now, this is not the coke that you drink after every meal. This is not that fizzy drink. Not at all. No, no, no. This is basically a grey, hard, porous fuel with high carbon content. The last picture of the, in this slide is of coke. Next is natural gas. It is basically methane which is used under the name of sui gas and is used in our homes and on our stoves. Now in the school we will do some really cool experiments inshallah when we will get back. And I want all of you to Google, go on the internet google some really interesting experiments related to the natural gas and then we are going to discuss this on the zoom class 
Now, then there is one more energy resource that is called the liquefied petroleum gas or the LPGs. As you know that in many parts of Gulshanabad, natural gas or methane, it doesn't come. It doesn't come at all. It, even in my house, there is no natural gas on the stove. Basically, the natural gas or the sui gas that we get uh, from the pipelines from the government, it is basically this natural gas methane. But in many parts of Gulshanabad, we are having load shedding of, the, of this gas. We cannot find this gas on our stoves. So what we use instead? What do you use instead? When you are having a load shedding of gas in your houses, what do you use? So I personally use gas cylinders. So what is inside these gas cylinders? Yes, inside these gas cylinders are the liquefied petroleum gas. Basically, these are the gases which under pressure are being liquefied. They are in the liquid form. So in the gas cylinders, you have these liquefied petroleum gases, butane and propane. Which two gases? Butane and propane. Now, there is an assignment on slide number four that you have to find the formulas of butane and propane. Fine. You guys will try to find the formulas of butane and propane. And you, can, you are going to tell me in the Zoom class. Now what are fossil fuels that we use every day? Before going into the details of fossil fuels, I would like to ask you a question. What is your understanding of fossil fuels? Or what is your understanding of the word fossils? Have you studied fossils in your previous classes? Yes or no? Okay, let me tell you what the word fossil is. Because before understanding the concept of fossil fuels, you should be able to understand the word fossils. So what are fossils? Fossils are remains or impression of a prehistoric plant or animal that is embedded in rock and that is preserved in a petrified form. So what is a prehistoric plant or animal? That belonged to a very early ages, like the mammoth. You know that elephants, they used to be covered in hairs, Previously, they were, you know, large mammoth and they were used to cover in all hairs and they usually have longer tusks than the animals that live today. So they, they were the animals that were of prehistoric age. Then other animals, the most famous animals are the dinosaurs. These animals are also from the prehistoric age. And same are the plants, same goes for the plants, like many plants they belong to the prehistoric age and you cannot find those plants today. So a fossil is any preserved remain, impression or trace of once living thing from a past geological age. Examples of fossils include bones, shells, exoskeletons, stone imprints of animals or microbes, objects that are preserved in amber. Amber is a wood. Then hair, you know the hair that is on your head the petrified wood and obviously the fuels and what are the fuels fuels that basically provide us energy so fossil fuels are oil coal and gas natural gas i have added some pictures of the fossil fuels and also some fossils so from these pictures you must now know that fossils are remains of living animals or plants that lived millions and millions of years ago and we call these fuels, the coal, oil, natural gas, fossil fuels, because they are also millions and millions of years old and they were once living things.
In this slide, we are going to discuss that how fuels they will release energy. You have the concept of fuels, that they are energy resources, and you have the concept of fossils. And now you know that fossil fuels are oil, natural gas, and coal. So how energy is released from these fossil fuels? How do we get enormous amount of energy that we are using in our industries, in our homes, in our schools, and pretty much everywhere? So basically, when fuels are burned in the combustion reaction, remember that we have discussed combustion reaction in slide number two and slide number three. So when fuels are burned in the combustion reaction, they release a lot of heat energy. They release a lot of which energy? Heat energy. So here we are going to discuss the molecule of methane, which is basically natural gas. So one methane molecule contains one carbon atom to which four hydrogen atoms are bonded together. Now here I want to give a concept of chemical bonding. You know when chemical bonds in nature, they are broken down, they release a lot of energy, which you are going to study in detail in your later classes, chemistry classes maybe. So when bonds are between, broken between molecules, they release a lot of energy. So here the methane molecule contains one carbon atom and four hydrogen atoms. So when it is burned, the hydrogen atoms will disintegrate or will be removed from the carbon atom. Now what is present in the air? What do we breathe in? When carbon atom will be left alone and hydrogen atom will be released from the carbon atom, so they will combine with which atom, with which molecule? What is present in the air? Yes, oxygen. Carbon will also combine with the oxygen and hydrogen will also combine with the oxygen. So when carbon will combine with the oxygen, what it will make? Carbon dioxide. And when hydrogen and oxygen will uh, combine together, what they will make? water. So you have two products of methane burning or the combustion of methane. There are two products, carbon dioxide and water. Both carbon and hydrogen will react with the oxygen in the air and they will produce carbon dioxide and water. And this will release a lot, an enormous amount of energy. This will release a lot of energy. So the formula of methane is CH4. Remember that I've given you an assignment to find out the formula of butane and propane. Now these are also gases, but they are the liquefi liquefied petroleum gases. But methane is a natural gas. It is tasteless, odorless, and uh, you know, we will discuss natural gas in detail in the later slides. In this slide, we are going to discuss the formation of coal in the form of a story, so let's start. Some 300 million years ago, there were huge forests. Now these plants died in swamps around river banks and they got covered with soil and mud. As the years passed, the weight of the ground along with the earth's heat converted these dead plants into coal. The action of bacteria is also very important as it changed the decaying plants to a thick layer of rotten dyed plants which is known as peat. So basically in this slide, what you have to memorize is that there are two main factors that contributed in making the coal. And what are these two factors? Yes, extreme pressure and extreme heat of the earth. I hope you all know that the inner core of the earth is extremely hot. The earth is divided into four layers. The outer layer in which all the vegetation and we live in is known as crust then there is mantle, then there is inner layer, and then there is outer layer. So you all know that the inner layer of the, earths are of the earth is really, really hot. So in this slide, we have an assignment for you as well that you have to search for the coal reservoirs of Pakistan. And there is one more question, and which is, can you create electricity from coal? If yes, then you have to write this answer on your rough copies, and I'm going to ask this uh, in the Zoom class. When you will search this answer, you will come across really, really interesting facts that I want you to search and then tell me. I have also left some hint for the coal reservoirs of Pakistan in this slide as well. So if you really see the picture closely, you can really get where the coal reservoirs of Pakistan are located. 
otherwise you can find them on internet as well but the hints are there in the slide as well so please be careful try to read keenly try to read each and every word and try to find the hints and best of luck for that In this slide, we are going to study about the stages of coal formation. Although it's not in your book, but just to let you know that coal is formed in different stages, I have added these slides. So the first stage is peat, which is soft, spongy and contains a lot of water and must be dried before use. The second stage is lignite. When peat is subjected to increased vertical pressure from accumulating sediments like mud and rock, it changes into lignite. Then this lignite is converted into bituminous coal which is used greatly in the industry. The final form of coal is anthracite and it is the hardest coal and it has a high luster or shine. As you can see in the picture that anthracite is the shiniest coal of all. Another important fossil fuel is oil. Now oil was formed from the microscopic animals and plants that once lived in the sea. Now microscopic animals are those animals which cannot be seen from the naked eye. We cannot see them without the aid of a microscope. They are so tiny, so small that we cannot see them without the aid of a microscope. Therefore we call them microscopic. Now these animals, they lived in the sea millions of years ago. Their dead bodies got collected at the bottom of the sea and was eventually covered with sand and mud. Now this sand and mud, with the passage of time, it got hardened and it was called sedimentary rocks. Over thousands of years, this was converted into a thick layer. Now these decaying organisms under high temperature and pressure were changed into crude oil. Now basically crude oil is impure oil, which means that once the impurities are being removed from the crude oil, they are ready to be used in your car engines, in, in you know, aviation fuel jets, in your petrol uh, stations and so on. So the same rules apply here that was being used in the coal formation. And what is that rule? High temperature and high pressure. Just like coal is formed in stages, so is the oil. Now the layers of sand and mud, they are changed into rocks that was called sedimentary rocks, as you can see in the picture as well. These rocks have a speciality. And what is that speciality? That these rocks are porous, which means that they have pores inside them or holes inside them. 
so what it will do is that it will allow the liquids to move slowly through them now as a result oil will rise through the porous rocks until it meets a layer of impermeable rock which definitely will not allow liquid through now this will create a kind of a pocket a gas pocket or a oil pocket in which the oil is trapped and it is these pockets of oil and gas that gas companies look for now these companies will create a huge setup of machinery that will extract the oil from the oceans now the last but not least is the natural gas so how natural gas is formed natural gas is basically lighter than air and it is mostly made up of which gas methane and it is tasteless means it does not have any taste it is odorless means it does not have any smell and it is colorless as well now it is used as a fuel for ovens homes water heaters kilns automobiles and turbines like oil it is also a product of decomposed organic matter typically from ancient marine microorganisms that was deposited over the past 550 million years ago now do you know that liquid refined methane is used as a rocket fuel and it must be interesting for you people to know that methane is also abundant in other parts of the solar system as well like you might find huge deposits of methane on mars I hope Now everything is clear to you people. If the not, gas, in so class is always available, and even in the Google natural Classroom, you can ask any air, question at any time you want. Gas, Plus, and it is the important thing that we need to remember is that what are main types of fossil fuels? Why we call them fossil fuels? Why we call them fuels actually? And how they are formed? their formation like oil, how their formation takes place in steps matter, so all these things are important i hope you have the concept of all the natural fuels that you are using ago. in your houses now, in do your you schools know that liquid in your everyday life used as a rocket fuel and i hope and it must that all of you, you to are well prepared also do your research from the google well. all the questions critical like thinking questions are there in the powerpoint presentation right so go through them be prepared do your Now research but not and least is the natural when we are going to so ask the questions in the zoom form. class you should all natural be prepared gas is basically like all my little scientists should, should be prepared, prepared at that time which gas okay? methane so good luck for and your research good luck for your powerpoint presentation